Hello everyone, Bridget here and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I am making videos about storytelling and fandom stuff and just just having a good time and my cat's meowing right outside my door, so pay no attention. <laughs> this video is actually the start of a new kind of video format for me and I'm going to be diving into video analysis, I guess you're gonna call it. Um, so I'm going to be looking at Avatar The Last Airbender in a writing sense. So I'm not looking at it in any other respect. I'm not sure like in an artistic respect or anything like that, not in the way of animation or anything, just in the way of writing and how they form their characters and their story arcs and all that good stuff. Avatar is, yes, one of my all-time favorite shows. So I'm really excited to dive into it and really look at what made it such a great show and how it still, it still stands up like today. I've rewatched it like so many times. My cat really wants into my room, but I'm not gonna let her in because I'm filming right now. She's gonna have to wait. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing like broad brush strokes because I, don't want to make this video super long. I am probably going to be doing videos in the future more detailed in regards to Avatar to do with like certain storylines, certain characters, because there is a lot to dissect in this show. Like Zuko's storyline or Toph in general, like I could do a whole video about Toph Beifong. Probably will, because she's amazing. Can't get enough of her. So yeah. If you guys have any specific topics to do with Avatar or any other shows you want to recommend for me to look at, leave it down in the comments. But for now, let's just dive into these broad brushstrokes of Avatar The Last Airbender. One of the first things that I realized when actually taking a detailed look at Avatar is that it really doesn't coddle the audience. It is a kid's show from Nickelodeon, but there is a lot of really serious stuff in Avatar. It really approached very serious subject matter in a very palatable way so that still young kids can enjoy it, but even as you get older, you realize how serious the material was and just how well it was written so that kids could actually still enjoy it. And one of these things was as I, as I rewatched it, I realized that sometimes it's just a shift in language. So even in the first episode, we have Aang realizing that all of his people are gone. And instead of the, the word that, um, the word that Sokka and Katara's grandmother uses is extinct. We thought they were all extinct. And that is a much less, um, I don't know if it's like less impactful, less, doesn't feel as real, I don't know. But if she had used the word genocide or anything in that realm, it would have hit differently. And I feel like it would have hit like too hard. So that's one thing that looking back at it, I was like realizing that that was very serious subject matter and yeah it was a literal genocide of the air nomads and you don't really realize how heavy subject matter was of things you're watching when you're a kid when you are a kid uh, one of the one of the most one of the most powerful scenes in the early episodes was Aang finding monkey Yatso's skeleton and this was, um, this was very powerful. And up until that point, I don't think Aang really realized how real things were and how serious they were. But seeing his mentor, seeing his body, like his skeleton after like a hundred years is, yeah, it was, I don't know, I don't know how to, how to phrase it. Another thing that I think helped is that 
it's told through the eyes of a child. So with Katara, Sokka, and Aang, it's being seen through their eyes and it's the constant kind of optimism, I guess, and the attitude that everything's gonna be all right that I think would have gone away if they were older. And having Katara be the narrator of the opening sequence is very helpful as it does it does create this aura of optimism that things are going to be okay the show also made it very accessible in the way of balancing itself with um serious the show also made, it, made itself very accessible with balancing serious material with humor. So we would have like them needing to get to the North Pole? Yeah, the, North, the Northern Water Tribe. And at that point it wasn't that serious. They didn't really know the stakes yet, but they knew that they were on the run from Zuko at that point in these early episodes and and then to have the juxtaposition of Aang wanting to ride the elephant koi and that juxtaposition just really gives the um it it emphasizes that they are still children and that they're gonna have these needs to keep themselves distracted and to not fall into despair because yeah they are still kids another great example of this is in the season two episode the desert where all the whole gang is trapped in the desert after appa is captured and sokka gets for lack of a better phrase he gets high off cactus juice and without this, it would have been such a dark and frankly depressing episode. But with Sokka and Momo, I think Momo got a bit of the cactus juice. But yeah, with that, with that in there, it really took off the edge with Aang really trying to find Appa and Katara trying to keep everyone together and Toph just kind of losing momentum as she can't see anything in the desert. It really kind of added this lighthearted or like lighthearted tone where otherwise it would have been totally depressing and not really an episode that people would want to rewatch on the regular. One of the most powerful episodes that I remember is Appa's Lost Days, which is soon after the episode The Desert, where Appa is captured and traded into the circus and then escapes and it's basically his whole journey and he's a character that we don't really get to explore much in other parts of the show. And having this insight into his life when he's on his own is really heartbreaking. And seeing him so vulnerable when he's usually the the rock that everyone go, that everyone like he is the he's really. Um, for the rest of the show, he's not really paid much attention to as he takes them from place to place and it isn't until they lose him that they realize how much really they depend on him. And his journey through this episode is so, yeah, it's so heartbreaking. As he gets traded into the circus, he goes through traumatic experience with the animal abuse that goes on at the circus and he 
as we see when he is with Suki and the other Kyoshi warriors he develops a fear of he had developed a fear of fire when he was at the circus and seems to from what I could tell have some kind of yeah he definitely developed some kind of trauma and maybe some form of PTSD after that whole experience I'm kind of sad that it wasn't revisited more but I'm really glad that they touched on all of that and it was a really powerful episode one of the biggest things that I was impressed with when every time I rewatch Avatar is the characters themselves from Zuko going through his whole character arc from being the main villain to having an identity crisis betraying Iroh and then redeeming himself his character arc is one of the best ones I've ever seen and I don't know any character that can really top Zuko's character progression just saying the other part that they really did well was representation in disability this this started off pretty early with the episode in season one of the northern air temple with Teo, who lived in the northern air temple with his dad i really appreciate the attitude that they took towards disability where it wasn't something that held the characters back it was really kind of em empowering in a way and it was really them finding strength through their differences and Teo has this kind of energy about him that it doesn't seem like his disability really affects him he has as his dad says like a new life in the sky and yeah he's just like a really bright character the other amazing example of their representation is of course Toph Beifong Toph is <laughs> the best <laughs> I don't know how else to put it she is the best <sighs> I don't really know how to put it Toph really <sighs> I don't know how do I describe Toph Beifong Toph is really an interesting character because she doesn't really take anyone's shit and she was probably the sassiest character in the whole show and she's just like that kind of character that you would kind of want to be friends with her and she she takes her disability and changes it into something that makes her a valued member of the team and her way of earth bending is just amazing and it really amplifies her skills i feel like yeah she's such i don't know she feels like such an inspiration and just like not let your differences impact your future and that you can adapt to your situation i don't know. again i'm gonna have to make another video about toff because i could go on for a while about her so there are so many other parts of avatar that i would love to dive into but i think i'm gonna cut it there for this video i've been wanting to do a video on avatar the last airbender for a while and since netflix is now partnering with the creators of avatar and they are doing a live adaptation i decided it was it was time to do a look back on avatar and i'm so excited to see what they do with the show in a live action format we are not talking about the atrocity that was the m night Shyamalan dumpster fire we're not even gonna touch it so yeah i'm most likely i think i am gonna be doing a reaction when the trailer comes out and might be doing reactions to the episodes when they eventually come out 
probably, to be honest, because I'm really excited. <laughs> Leave a comment down below if there's any other parts of Avatar that you'd like me to talk about, if there's any other TV shows or movies that you want me to talk about. By all means, like, request something that I ha probably haven't seen. I'm open to it. I have seen a lot of TV shows, so if you request a movie, I probably haven't seen it. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm really excited to do more videos like this, so let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about. And... I might do it and yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this video leave a comment down below with any suggestions give this video a like be sure to check out my patreon page and consider supporting me <laughs> and be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and I will catch you guys on Friday with another video bye I don't wanna be what I'm not, it's wasted energy, nothing left for me.